Good morning, students. Today I am going to teach you about couple of forces. We have learned up till now moment, resolution of force, and composition of forces also. Right now, I'll tell you about the concept of moment. If two parallel forces, the force in force system, you are uh, happily known about parallel force system. If the distance between these two forces is say D and magnitude of forces is C, say P, two unlike, they are in a different direction. Two unlike parallel non-collinear forces having same magnitude form a couple. Right? The distance between these two forces is called as an arm or a lever of a couple. So, magnitude of a couple will be, I'll call it as, a, it's a one kind of moment actually, is equal to P into D. You are supposed to take one force of them and multiply it with the distance. So, unit will be kilonewton meter. As you know, the moment's unit is a kilonewton meter, right? Then, I'll tell you a few properties of a couple. Uh, first of all, you are supposed to remember those should be parallel to each other. It's a, it does not mean ki it should be vertical. It may be like this, but they should be parallel to each other. Say this is a Q, Q. Okay, and distance between them is uh, D. So, I'll call a moment as a Q into D. We know how to take a moment. Force into perpendicular distance, right? So, I'll tell you a few things related to that. Ki two unlike parallel non-collinear forces of a same magnitude form a couple first of all right two unlike unlike means their direction is not same they are exactly opposite to each other but their magnitude is same right and they are having some specific different distance between them means they are parallel to each other then they form a couple the resultant of a couple is zero so what is resultant first of all let me know resultant is generally this is our formula summation fx4 plus summation fy square see we'll refer this diagram one is going up so i'll what i'll work out first of all summation fx will be having zero forces because all those are say upward uh, say vertical forces then summation f y is equal to plus p minus p it comes out to be zero so ultimately resultant is zero so resultant of couple is zero we must remember this what we are supposed to remember the forces are equal in magnitude right they are parallel to each other and they are opposite in a direction and the resultant is zero we have just now worked out the moment of a couple that is p into d that a couple cannot be balanced by a single force say if i add one another force to this system like this it cannot get balanced to balance it i must add again a moment again a moment to it right means if i add two forces then they will form a moment and a moment can balance it right the moment of a couple is independent of the moment center Say, if I place it here, if I place it here or anywhere on the system, it is having same effect. Getting me? Okay. Then we are supposed to remember ki, if I shift a couple anywhere, it does not change its effect, right? We can uh, shift it, say, in a downward or in a horizontal way also, right? If we shift it and tilt it like this also, then also it will be having same effect because it is a, ultimately it is giving me moment. So it cannot change uh, its magnitude. Okay? Then we'll learn about Varignon's theorem. Right? I'll write down the formula for it. Okay? Varignon's theorem. It tells me the moment of a resultant opposite. Uh, at a specific point is equal to summation moment of all forces about the same point. Same point means what on this system say if so many forces are acting right like this then I have considered this point as a reference and I have I, I have worked out even resultant I will mark resultant in a different color so that you can understand if my resultant is say somewhere here like this, this is my resultant. Then I'll take a moment of a resultant of uh, about this point 
that is nothing but r into d which is equal to summation of a moment of all forces about specific point summation moment i'll write from here i'll get the distance of the resultant from that specific point from this point at how much distance that resultant will act we can understand by using varignon's theorem see then after that if i plot a resultant with reference to this on this say that distance is nothing but a radius of my circle i'll plot the circle then if i can mark my resultant over here like this also like this also like this also my resultant will be tangent to this circle then how i am going to decide in which direction it is acting i need to concentrate the sign of the this uh, moment summation moment if summation moment of all forces is a positive means it is giving me clockwise moment if it is negative then it is giving me anti clockwise moment see uh, say pay to attention towards here if my resultant is here it is give me going to give me clockwise moment if my resultant is here it is going to give me anti clockwise moment so depending upon the sign of this moment you can uh, decide whether your resultant is here or here after that you are supposed to concentrate the signs of summation fx and summation fy also if your summation fx is positive and summation fy is also positive your resultant will be here because both components are in a first quadrant if your uh, resultant or a moment uh, of all forces is clockwise and summation fx and summation fy are positive then it your resultant will be somewhere here then your uh, say moment is giving anti clockwise direction and summation fx and summation fy positive then your resultant will be here right depending upon that this is again giving me clockwise moment but my summation fx and summation fy must be having negative values right this is going to give me anti clockwise but my summation fx and summation fy may be having negative values so depending upon the signs of summation fx and summation fy we are going to decide where our resultant will act means from varignon's theorem we can understand the distance of the resultant from specific point that's all from my side we'll stop here happy learning